Hello and welcome. My name is Kevin Barisso, and I am the director of the Automatic Identification Lab here at the University of Memphis. In this video, I will be going over how to use the Ethernet IP functionality that is now available with the Zebra FX 9600 fixed RFID reader. Used for the automation of material handling equipment, such as conveyors and robotics, PLCs are industrial computers that are designed to specifically work with various input sensors and output devices such as motors or valves. With this addition of the Ethernet IP functionality, Zebra has allowed for a cleaner communications path between the RAIN RFID reader and the industrial PLC. This is the lab's FX9600, which has generously been donated by Zebra Technologies. So this video assumes that your FX9600 already has the Ethernet IP functionality installed and a license assigned to the reader. If this is not the case, you will need to contact Zebra to get the correct download and more importantly, to get the license. If you go to their webpage and type in FX9600 and select the fixed RFID reader support, you will be brought to this site. And if you scroll down, you'll see FX9600 industrial ethernet software under developer tools. Click on that. You will be brought to this page here and you will have the option to download both the add-on profile that allows for the Rockwell software to correctly identify and, cr and connect to the reader. And also the second file here has the example program that I'm about to show you, as well as some additional documentation and the user manual. So I've downloaded the files here. And if I click on the Network Connect EIP file, and drill down into this, you'll see a number of files, including the fixed RFID Ethernet IP sample app. You will want this file, or depending on which controller you have, you may need to open up the L5X file instead and import that, which will get you the same functionality, but for processors that are not supported in version 32 of the uh, Factory Talk Designer, or Studio Designer, excuse me. Okay, so here is the sample program that they provided. And if you go under assets, you can see the user defined data types that they've created, as well as the module defined data types that are necessary to make all this work. However, the good news is you don't really have to worry about any of that because they've already baked that into their sample program. And so you can see it has a message here and down under my I.O. configuration, I have my FX9600 reader. If I open that up, and this will take a second or two to open on my computer, you can see that it allows you to configure the IP address, and I can come in and change whether I'm dealing with standard or extended size EPC tags. One of the first things you'll have to do in the messages that you plan to use is go in and make sure that the message is configured correctly under the communications tab to talk to that FX9600 reader. So there that is, it's happy, so we can tell it okay, and we could download this to the controller and everything would be great. However, I don't have this style of controller available to me here in the lab, and so I've exported all this and imported it into RS Logics 5000 so that I can connect to my L23 controller instead of the one they have this set up for. So here's the converted version of the demo app that Zebra provides. So this is my converted version of the demo app. It is set up more along the lines of how it would be used in an actual application versus just a demonstration of the different functions. And so in my first rung here, all I've got is a manual process to clear my tag list while I do the demonstrations and tests. And then in line or rung 13, I've got this do maintenance jump subroutine, which is the maintenance routine here. And this is nothing more than all of the instructions from the demo app or demo program they provide. And so I can go in and do things like set my antenna config and it will copy things. It will use a message, which brings us to the issue of one of the things you have to make sure you've done 
your program is make sure that this configuration here is set up correctly for your IP address um, and that you have changed your message or your tag types to match what is configured. I have it set up around the extended EPC tag, so that's what it's set for there. Uh, I can, everything that was in the demo file is in here with the exception in, in my maintenance subroutine, with the exception of performing inventory and performing access. And because I'm not doing any sort of access work going after memory blocks uh, two and three, I'm just doing the EPC memory, memory block one, I have that embedded functionally in my program here on rung three, but I'm gonna to get to that in a moment. First, I wanna talk about how the logic in this program is going to work. Okay, so before we get started on the ladder logic, I wanted to go over the general process flow for how my program is set up. There is the start here where we have the program downloaded into the PLC, and it basically waits for something to trigger a read process. When we have that trigger occur, we start this copy synchronous file instruction, which is running the entire time, because what it will do is allow me to copy any instructions to the reader and receive any results from the reader back into my PLC. I will then need to set the inventory command to one. That's the read setting. I will increment my handshake, and that handshake has to be between zero and 127 as far as the value is concerned. And when I increment that handshake, then I will see immediately whatever state that the command is in take effect on the reader. The reader will sit there and read and try to look for RAIN RFID tags. If the tag's EPC length is between one and 12, then I have a valid tag. However, in reality, it is actually two to 12 because they need to be done in increments of two. Um, if it finds a tag that's valid, it will check to see if it's in the tag list. If it is not in the tag list, then it adds it to the tag list, otherwise it ignores it. It will continue in the read cycle until it is determined that reading needs to stop, at which point the inventory command needs to be set to two. You need to do the handshake again. And again, it's looking for a value that is between zero and 127. If it is 127, I have my logic reset the handshake to zero. And otherwise that point at which the handshake increments or gets set to zero causes the reader to take the command, in this case, inventory command two, and implement that at the reader, which stops the read process. I then go back up and wait for a instruction to tell me to start trying to read the tags again. Okay, so hopefully that flowchart makes sense. Here is how I've actually implemented it. And so this is that inventory trigger that I mentioned the, the logic is waiting for. And I chose to use a counter to control my sequencing through the uh, process. And so whenever my sequencer is not equal to zero, which means I'm somewhere in my sequence, I am continuously doing this synchronous copy file instruction for the output inventory command and for the input inventory response. And so this is how I'm constantly sending commands. And this is how I'm constantly looking for incoming tag data. I then need to set my output command type to a one, this is, which is read, two is stop. And after I've done that, I increment my counter and then I increment my handshake. And as I mentioned, the handshake value has to be, be between zero and 127. And so here I'm checking to see if it's less than 127. If so, just increment it. If it's greater than 126 or 127, then I set that back to zero. Either case will drive the reader to accept the, the new instruction that I previously did. I increment my sequential counter. And then the next four rungs are processing the incoming reports. And so, I make sure I'm in the right step in my sequence. 
And then I make sure that the tag report is between zero and 12. In practice, it's really between two and 12. So I could change that to a two um, or to a one so that it's greater than one, which is two, but I've left it at zero, that's fine. Uh, it just makes sure I don't get anything with a length of zero. I will then do a search and compare if I make it past that first filter, so to speak. And I'm looking to see if the tag is already in my tag list. If it finds it in the tag list, it sets the, uh, the found bit, the FD bit. If it does not find it in the tag list, then this is false and the, and the system does the FIFO load. It should be noted the way I set up this file search and compare, the mode of all means that it does this entire instruction before moving on, which is why this works. I then reset my uh, find tag uh, control for the, for the file search and compare so that it will work for the next time around. And this does it for tag report one, whereas this was doing it for tag report zero, tag report two, and tag report three. At some point, you are going to have to figure out how you are going to end your process. I'm using a timer. You can use a second input. You can do the falling edge of, a fir of the first input, however you choose to do this. You're gonna need something that basically says, hey, at this point, set my inventory command to two, which is stop, and then increment the sequence so that I process my handshake again, which will then get me uh, to, to a point where this command is executed and it'll stop the read process. And then when that, and then I do another increment, and this is resetting everything. And so I reset my sequencer, uh, count my counter for my sequencing. It's not really a sequencer. I reset my, or unlatch my inventory trigger, and to be safe, I reset, <coughs> excuse me, I reset my find tag file search and compare control. And then, like I said before, here's jumping into the maintenance. And so let's go ahead and go online with this. And I may need to download the latest version. Yes, I do. And so we're gonna download that. And once this is loaded, I will be able to connect to my reader. Uh, well, the software connects automatically and I will be able to then initiate reads and I can set the antenna value if I want and do all of the things that I would normally expect to have done. And so just to make sure, I'm going to make sure that my inventory uh, or my antenna value is set where I want it. And so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to switch to my thing here. Let's see. This is, I can close this one. We can ignore that. Here we go. And so if we come down to the bottom, Make sure that S antenna ID is set to the antenna you have connected. I'm connected to two at the moment. I can come up here to antenna config, set that to 3000, thousand. All right, that's set, that's set. Uh, select one, yep, okay. So that's all good. I can now trigger that. And you'll notice it changes the message to done. It sets this to done here, uh, which is that bit. If you get an error here, it will still clear itself. However, make sure that you have gone into the messages and when the files get converted, sometimes things get messed up, make sure your path is correct by going in and rebrowsing through the tree to the reader itself and then reapply it and that should make the error go away. All right, so my reader antenna strength is set where I want it. I have a bunch of stuff in my tag list so we can clear that. So that's empty. If I come in here and hit that, and it's picking up a bunch of, of tags that are in my office apparently. So let's wait for that to time out and then we can clear this. Actually, we could probably clear it while we're waiting. All right, we're gonna try that again. Good, and so there's the tag already. And I'm still picking up stuff, probably because I've got the power set 
as high as I do, because yeah, you can see that's still jumping up a little bit. So to solve that, let's change this to 2000. And we can clear our tag list. That's still set, so that's good. Let's go to maintenance and let's set that again. And because you can't tell if it's worked or not, I'm gonna clear that just to be safe. And so we know we're good there. And whoops, let's go back to here. And so now, hopefully, all right, so this is still zero, good, good, good. One tag, there's my tag. Um, and so it is acting the way I expect. And if I come over to here and go to my tag list, there is my tag. And I can look at the tag and I can see what the length is and I can see the individual data points on that. Now, depending on how you display this, uh, I don't suggest displaying this as ASCII because you get these weird values in here. I suggest you display it as hex because this is how an RFID person is gonna think about this and look at this. And so each of these are essence, <coughs> excuse me, essence. And as I look down through here, most significant is seven, least significant is one. And so I've got one, two, three, four, these first four bits are the E, and that makes sense because that's 14. And then, and then the next four bits are here, and that's 0010, which is binary for decimal of two, or hex of two, same thing um, at that point. And so there's my first two characters or digits in a traditional RFID hex string that is trying to display 96-bit EPC data. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I can run this again, and I'm gonna throw a bunch of other tags on, and you saw there, we just had 18 or 20 tags, or 17 or 18 tags, I guess, pretty much immediately appear, and that's because the reader is designed to handle hundreds of tags, and so reading 20 tags is not a big deal. It is doing its FIFO searches very, very quickly, or FIFO loads and its file search and compares very quickly. If we look at our tag list, we now have 20, excuse me, 20 uh, tags there. And like I said, because they are being displayed by default as uh, this ASCII, this, this weird display that, that Rockwell does, uh, where the dollar sign is the beginning of a character pair, whatever you want to call it. Um, so as you go down in data, you'll see all the dollar signs there, except for this, because it's small enough, it doesn't think it's a, a dollar. So if I change these to decimal, um, you'll see we get some odd values here, and that's because those are essence. And when the Rockwell software tries to display the, the signed or the single integer, that first most significant bit happens to show positive or negative. But because of how Zebra chose to implement this, uh, that doesn't really matter. And what this allows you to do very, very quickly and easily without having to necessarily convert anything, um, you can map, if I care about my first two, four, eight bits or whatever, I can map and check to see if this bit pattern matches what I'm looking for, and I don't have to worry about converting this to and from hex string. If you do need to export the data to a database or some sort of external system, however, you will need to convert this over to a hex string. Uh, there is a number. There are a number of videos out there, and there is plenty of information on the net to show you how to do that in in the Rockwell uh, interface and environment. If there's enough demand for it, I can create a video along those lines as well.
So I think that is everything for our program. We're able to read lots of tags quickly. We're able to uh, control the reader very, very easily. As you can see, if I wanted to configure other things based on the RFID experts uh, instructions or, or Zebra's instructions, I can go and get information about profiles. I can set information about filters within the reader, which will do filtering at the reader level instead of waiting for the PLC. I can control the GPIO on the reader itself and, and set, get and set its uh, configuration, which will allow me to control the triggers so I don't necessarily have to wait for the RFID or for the PLC to respond. But the whole point of this was letting the PLC do that control. So I'm not as worried about that. And so that was our FX9600. Hopefully this has been of help. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email is below in the description. You can reach out to Zebra's tech support. They are extremely helpful and will be able to help you through any questions you have as well. Obviously, I like the reader and would encourage you to go get one and get your PLC system to integrate directly to the reader, make things a little bit easier from a maintenance point of view, from an integration point of view. Uh, but that's all I have for now. I want to thank Zebra Technologies again for the donation of the reader to the lab. Thanks a bunch and have a great day.